Hi, I'm G, welcome to my channel, and this is my first go using Nova watercolor markers. Hi, so I've been sent some more art stuff to have a bit of a play with, and these are watercolor markers. These are called Nova watercolor markers, and these are from Trimcraft. So as usual, I thought I'd have a little bit of a play with them and uh, then let you know what I thought. So they quite kindly sent me two packs to try out. One is a 10 pack of colors and the other is a 10 pack of neutrals. So your browns, your grays, that kind of thing. And uh, I think these retail in uh, Britain for about £9.99 per pack. And if I flip them over and you have a little look at the back, you can see the usual um, website and social media stuff. It does say that they're non-toxic, which is great, um, but it also says that you should be careful because the ink may stain surfaces. And this is what they look like. So they're a long, thin marker, uh, and it's filled with water-based ink, and it's dual-tipped as well. So it's got a brush end and a tip end. I'll show you in a second. This is what they look like stacked up against my other watercolor markers. So you can see they're longer and thinner than the Winsor & Newton watercolor markers and the Letra Set Aqua marker. And like I said, they're a dual tip. So you've got this bullet tip that I wasn't a big fan of because it was very, very tough and a bit scratchy, but I loved the brush tip and that was absolutely brilliant. And also another thing that they had was they have these little fins on the caps. So anti-roll fins, I call them. So next I thought I'd put them into practice uh, on a picture that I've been meaning to do for a while, which is a bit different to my usual flowers, but I thought I'd have a go at doing a shell. So I picked up this mussel shell that had barnacles on it. So I thought really want to do this. So I decided I would layer it up like normal watercolors using the markers. And I started out just laying down that yellow ochre. And then I thought I'd put in some really light shadows on the barnacles using the very light gray. And straight up, I have to tell you that these markers don't have any names or numbers on them, which is a teeny bit frustrating. So all I can tell you right now is that, oh, I decided I was going to use the pale blue. There are two different blues, pale blue and dark blue. So I suppose it's fairly straightforward. Um, and you can see that I'm using a very tiny amount uh, of the brush tip, then adding the water. But look how much pigment you're getting out of there. Look how much color you're actually getting. So I, I became a big fan straight away of using just small amounts of the brush tip. And the brush tip was also quite fine. I have to say it was probably the finest out of all the brush tips that I've used. So it was really easy to put a tiny amount on or a large amount. But again, you can see me just putting a small amount of color on the paper here. And the colors were really, really Really reactive and reacted so quickly, so easily, so fully with the water. So you're getting this really nice bright color by just adding a little bit of water with the brush. And I think I was using the uh, size three sable um, to do this. Now you can see me layering up some more color. I'm putting purple on because it's a mussel shell. So I've done light blue and I've done dark blue. And now I'm putting on some purple to get those lovely purple tones that you get. But this is one of those mussels from a British beach. So it's not all just blue and pretty all over. It's got kind of a brownie kind of skin quality to it as well. So I had to put that in. So you, here you can see me just adding a dark brown layer on top of the blue and the purple that I've already done and just blending it gently, carefully with the brush to try and show this kind of brown kind of skin um, that has you know developed on some of the mollusks, allowing some of the blue to still show through, which is great. But I knew it was gonna be a nice dark color that it would give me a good contrast between the sort of pale barnacles at the bottom. So at this point, I'm pleased with how the shell is going, but I've got to tackle those barnacles. So I'll go a bit closer here so you can see, and I'm blending together the dark blue and the sort of dark brown color here, which had a slightly reddish edge. So it gave, when I blended the two colors together, kind of an earthy quality that you can see developing there with a sort of a tinge of purple going on. Now this is quite a small area I'm working on right now because I think the picture is only about 13 by 13 centimeters square. But that was brilliant for this really fine brush tip that I'm talking about, because it really allowed me to get into all these little areas on these barnacles, just put a tiny spot of color in there, and then get my fine brush in there to activate it and move that color around. And what I was hoping when I read that these were water-based inks inside the, the barrels was I was hoping that I would be able to put down a layer, then put a leather, another layer on top, which wouldn't affect the layer beneath. And I was not entirely right there. I've got to say that each layer that I put on, if I added too much water and it overworked it, it did blend with the other color underneath. But I actually found that to be a pretty cool effect. And it seemed to blend the colors together quite nicely uh, without getting too many of these like nasty muddy qualities that you can sometimes get. 
but it also meant that if you had done an area then it was too dark or the color was too bright, then you could add a bit of water to it and you could move it around, make it paler or even blot it uh, to take it down a notch. So it was that ability um, to be a bit more flexible and, and mess around with the colors. They weren't definitely fixed on the paper straight away. So my initial thoughts on these watercolour markers was um, I'd enjoyed using them. They seem to stack up very well against um, watercolour markers that I've used in the past. The colours seem really bright. Uh, so I thought, right, OK, I've done one side of the muscle. You can see I've left a space. So it's time to start doing the other side, the shiny side, the inside, the mother of pearl type side. So here I decided that I would just put down a layer of very, very pale gray, first of all. So I'm just tracing the edges, as it were. But this, I want to make this looser. So you can see my brush strokes going on really, really loosely to begin with. Lots of water in here and just layering up these colors one on top of any, another. I know that it's probably going to react a little bit with the layer that's gone underneath it. But I'm hoping that that's going to work in a kind of an expressive kind of way. Because I want this the back of this one to look a bit more expressive than the front, where I did it very very, very, you know, I think fairly tightly, especially the barnacles. So you can see me adding my greys, a bit of brown. You can see a light blue going on here, lovely maroon blue. And then you can see this navy blue, this darker blue that I'm popping around the edge of the muscle with. And at this point, I was quite liking it. And I was having to fight the urge to just leave it as it was. <laughs> and I was like, no, it needs more. It needs a bit more. So again, you can see me getting into the darker blue and also some little hints of purple in here as well. And I'm beginning to layer those darker colors on top of the lighter colors that are there. But I'm keeping, like I said, my brush strokes are fairly loose because I want that really nice shine that I had on the inside of this shell to really show through and be a really nice bright white highlight. So I'm putting those colors on, I'm adding the blues, I'm adding purples around the outside as well to try and make that outside look as dark and as kind of contrasty as it should. But I just continually add and layer up those colors on the inside. So you've seen me put down some gray, this kind of greeny gray, which worked really well with the shell. And then also adding some blues on top of that. And I'm just blending it in and letting the water sort of run about a little bit and, and kind of run and stain a little bit. And I was probably a bit more fussy with the inside of the shell than I was with the outside because the barnacles really broke up the surface. This was like one big teardrop shape that I had to try and balance between darks and lights. So that's what you can see me doing, layering up more dark colors towards the tip where it was in a lot more shadow. So even though I'm admitting I'm being a bit fussier, I'm trying to keep my brush strokes a bit looser. So hopefully you've noticed that I'm allowing paint to dry where it is. So it's getting drying lines. I'm not trying to blend and smooth every single edge out like I normally probably would. I'm determined to sort of leave some of these edges, leave some of these kind of like bits of paint showing where you get a harder edge on a softer edge and that kind of layered approach uh, to the painting. So at this point, I really did have to force myself to sort of think about stopping and wrapping the picture up. And there were just some darker areas inside. So I used the same combo of dark as I'd used on the front of the shell, that dark blue and that dark brown, and blended those together to show an area on the inside of the shell where perhaps some of that kind of mother of pearl shininess had been scraped away or, or etched away by something. And that was pretty much the end of uh, the front and the back of the muscle shell that I've just realized, looking at the paper, looks a bit like a deer's hoof print in blue. This wasn't my attention, but hey. So here's the finished pictures, and I gotta say I had a bit of fun with this. Um, the brush tip I was a really big fan of. I loved how fine it would be. I loved the reactivity of the paints with the water, but still how bright the colors could be. And I think you'll agree, you've got quite a watercolory finish to these. So at $9.99 for a pack of 10, I thought that's about a pound each. That is really good value for watercolor markers, uh, and I would recommend them. And if anybody else has used Nova watercolor markers and has got anything they wanna share, please don't forget to leave a comment below. Now, a quick note about light fastness. Um, this swatch was left on my windowsill, so all of the big colors you can see towards the top were done a month ago, and then the smaller strips of color underneath the others were done a month later. Now you can see in some cases there's no difference whatsoever, but the dark blue, you can see quite a big difference. It's a bit purple where I did it a month ago, and it's nice and dark where I did it recently. The greens and the browns, not too much difference, but the grays on the end are also showing quite a lot of fade between one month and a month previous. So I would keep whatever paintings you do with these markers out of any kind of direct sunlight. So I hope you liked the video. Let me know in the comments below if you did. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And you can follow me on all the different social media under the handle GMassamart. Thanks for watching.